You've seen the schedule. So let's not waste each other's time here because we don't have a lot of time doing the hard stuff that we need to do to get to where we want to go. This is about winning. It's about winning the world championship, period. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy inside the Globe Life studio at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy. After the bye week last week, Cowboys back at it. Sunday night football this week against the uh, Minnesota Vikings. And first off, uh, as the team got back together on Monday of this past week, I guess the bye week was probably good for everybody, right? It was uh, excellent, frankly. I, I, I really liked, you know, I think after six games is a perfect time, especially with us playing the Thanksgiving game and you know can we kind of get that mini bye week after the second Thursday game there against New Orleans so I uh, really like the way the schedule you know, lays up for us you know obviously five and one uh, we like where we are but it was really it was really good for everybody just to get away and and frankly for me personally just to take a step back and just really grind on some self Scott and just make sure that you know you, you didn't miss anything and um, and give you a little extra time working on the Minnesota Vikings. And uh, talking about these Minnesota Vikings, of course, head coach Mike Zimmer, a guy you're very familiar with in your days in Green Bay going up uh, against a Mike Zimmer coach team. What do you expect when you go up against a Zimmer team? Well, I mean, I've, I've always enjoyed um, competing against Mike. I mean, I, I go back to I was at the Saints when he was coordinator here in Dallas uh, when he was in Atlanta and Cincinnati, so had some opportunities to go against him, and I, I think he's done a fabulous job. In Minnesota, I think the way he, you know his teams play consistently up there is a credit to him and his and his program. Uh, but you know, defensively, uh, they're going to test you. You know, it's, it was their bye week also, so I think just uh, you know he's he was kind of the the double mugs we call it Abby the double mug scheme. He was you know he was the first one to really do that to the, to this extent and and uh, has the whole gamut and you know so he'll definitely you know challenge our protection and our adjustments and so forth. But, uh, you know, this is a big game for them, and, and you know, we want to we want to keep rolling. You know, we've, we've put together a good five string of wins here, and this is a tough place to play. Crowd noise is, I think this is, you know, top three, you know, stadiums in the in the country to compete against as far as, you know, the, the crowd noise. So this is a big challenge for us. Okay, uh, then uh, applying pressure, uh, their defensive end, Daniil Hunter, they got him back this year after he missed yeah. all of last year. He's got six sacks yeah. the first six games of the season. I look, went back and looked up. He's got 38 sacks in the last 41 games of his career. He, he yeah. can be a handful, can he? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, excellent length. It just, you know, I had a chance to really watch him grow from his rookie, his rookie season. And, you know, they definitely missed him last year. But, um, you know, and, and he and he plays that. You know, he plays the discipline of that defense very well too. So it's not like he's. And it's a, I'm complimenting. It's not. It's not like he's just going out playing for sacks. So uh, they're, they're very disciplined in their pass rush, playing each and every week. But uh, he, he's a he's a great matchup. Okay, along those lines, you get Lyle Collins uh, back activated uh, at the outset of this week after missing the last five games. How's he looking? And Terrence Steele has filled in admirably the last five weeks. Yeah, Terrence has done an excellent job. It's, it's great to have LC back. You know, we had a chance to see him out there Monday, and uh, you know, he's done a really good job of staying in shape. So um, I have never felt better about our offensive line depth. And I think this is a great situation for us to be in. All right, we are just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. Um, I don't think you'll ever catch me saying this game doesn't matter whether it's a, a game late in the year and we're granted a bye. I think it still matters. It's all about the culture and it's all about all about what you're creating and how you're um, how you're how you're seeing the game and your perspective. So uh, yeah, I mean, I want to play just because I want to be out there and help my team and. Obviously missing the time that I did last year, that's, that's no fun, but knowing that we're a contender and knowing that we, we, can, we can grow it, that's, that's why I can understand the big picture and know that this is a journey, this is more than one game. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T, Ford, built for Texas, built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys, Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys, it's Miller time. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Dak, same Dak, very good. Uh, he looks great, he looks great, you know, uh, in and out his, you know, drops. But I mean, I don't know the restrictions on him or what's going on, but I mean, to me, he looks perfectly fine. Obviously, just gotta, gotta keep progressing. 
Um, this is, I don't want to say something like my shoulder, but this is, uh, in a sense, I, I don't know if it's just my decision. Obviously, you guys know me, been around and, and watch me, watch me go. I tell you right now, I go play, play today if I could. So, knowing that this is a long journey and a long season, I don't necessarily know if this is fully my decision. Uh, but I'm gonna just keep controlling the things I can, get better. I've gotten better each and every day, uh, and that's what's most important. So. I'm just focused on doing that again tomorrow. The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now here inside the Globe Life Studios at the Stars. I am joined by David Moore, the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. He's been the talk of the town the last two weeks. No, not David Moore. Not me. Dak no. Prescott has <laughs> been. It's been interesting to see how this uh, process has played out since he suffered the injury. Well, it has, and, it, and as Dak Prescott has told the media on at least two occasions over the last 10 days to two weeks, uh, if I told you whether or not I was going to play, what would you guys have to talk about? So this is going to extend to game day. But, you know, this week he uh, uh, did work out on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, from the part we saw of practice, he was moving well, but did not take part in everything. And uh, we'll do rehab, come in, do some individual drills, some fundamental drills. Didn't necessarily take part in teamwork. Uh, and then you, you talk about, uh, and Mike McCarthy talked about uh, the threshold, and that is nebulous. It, it is the threshold that uh, Dak Prescott and Britt Brown, the trainer who is working with him in rehab, uh, when they feel that he's able to make all the movements that are necessary and it's not part of his thinking, whether or not he will be able to go in the game. Right, and with the nature of a calf injury, there's a likelihood that you have three quarterbacks active and not yeah. just Cooper Rush, but also Will Greer. What about Cooper Rush, though, if he is out there on Sunday night? Well, and because of all this, and we should say that the club officials and, and many of Dak's teammates were optimistic that he'll be able to play, but you still had to prepare for the possibility that he will not. And, and that meant working along two tracks. That meant getting Cooper Rush more work with the uh, starters than he otherwise would in practice. Um, you know, Cooper Rush to me is very interesting because uh, the, the coaches and, and players here express ultimate confidence in his ability uh, to handle the offense. Uh, they say he knows it in and out, but I don't know if fans would have that same comfort level because they've only seen him throw three regular season passes, and that was back in, I believe, 2017. So not a lot of work, not a resume, but they see this guy every day, and they've expressed confidence about his ability to run the offense. Can he run it to the level of execution that Dak Prescott has? I doubt that because he was operating at such a high level so far this season. And our final 20 seconds here, Lyle Collins working some at guard this week. Yeah, uh, Mike McCarthy said uh, missed a lot of games, uh, missed five games, was not available all last year. So when you think about it, Lyle Collins has only been available to this coaching staff for one game since they've gotten here. Uh, they want to see him work back there. Um, he's not going to start this week uh, at all working some at left guard where he started. And Mike McCarthy said the other day it was like riding a bike. So we'll see how this plays out. All right, David Moore, we appreciate it. And up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, a trip to the film room with Will McClay and Isaiah Stanback. You know, Coop's been here for a while. Uh, he knows his offense in and out. So, uh, you know, I think if his, his number's called, he'll be ready. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort, the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones now joined by Will McClay as we are here in the film room, breaking it down, taking a look at this Minnesota offense. They got a lot of weapons on this offense, don't they? A lot of weapons, and it's built off of the run game, and then they'll get explosive pass games, but it starts with 33. Take a look at them in the run game first. They're going to run the zone scheme. You're going to watch the back and the lineman's feet. They're going to work together. But now you're going to see the decision by the back. Just stretch it, and then he gets vertical, and once he steps on the gas, a big play. And Dalvin Cook has a couple of hundred-yard rushing games, in fact, in their last game against Carolina. Now, what are we seeing here? All right, they're going to use the run game to set up the pass game. Play action pass. They're going to commit the linebackers to stop, and what that does is create windows. And you're going to see a chance for a big play because a quarterback's going to have time to throw it based on the action here. So we got the arrow on Thielen here, but now they're going to show run. 
All right, linebackers are going to commit. Now they spread out the defense, and the quarterback gets deep, and he's also got time to read the coverage, and there's a shot and all that space created by it. Wow, and uh, that's Adam Thielen there. Of course, they got Justin Jefferson as well, two of the premier receivers you'll find on any team. Another way they're using the run play action here. Okay, you've got 21 personnel. Defense is going to commit. All right, you're going to have a vertical route, and then you're going to have a great route by Thielen down here at the bottom. But also watch with the play action, the time the quarterback gets to read the coverage. Play action, boot away. He's got blocking, sets up deep, reads the coverage, sees the corner leave, and there he hits Thielen in the hole. How much space can you get? And he was wide open there. All right, show us another one. And uh, you got a bunch formation at the top of the screen here. Yeah, what they're doing here is a straight drop back pass. So what they're going to do now is they've condensed the formation. Everybody's inside the numbers. They're going to spread the defense out with the route and speed. You're going to see 17 here run through the middle and take two safeties with speed and a wide open window for Mr. Jefferson here down here in the route. All right, so we'll see this. All right, you see the speed go through, takes the safety, takes the other safety, and then there's the window. A lot of things to contend with with the Minnesota offense. It is uh, quite a challenge for the Dallas defense. Will McClay, we appreciate it. And let's uh, hear what the players are talking about in the locker room. Uh, I mean, they're extremely patient guys, man. I mean, regardless of, you know, their route running, they, those guys understand that they, they can be patient with you, get you off the line, and, and, and understand where they need to be on the field. So, I mean, those guys are pretty – I mean, they're really good. They're elite guys, and uh, they're, they're, they're great with the ball in their hands after the catch, too. So, I mean, it's going to be a good challenge to see those guys. Now, he's a great player, you know, a great receiver. I watch him just about as much as I watch any other receiver. Uh, I like his game. I like the way he, you know, moves with the ball after the catch, his routes. Uh, very phenomenal receiver. Uh, I mean, last year Ever Everson came and he was here for for a short amount of time, but um, he, he's a great he's a great player, good good for the team, and I know that's where he feels comfortable and at home. And um, and on the other across across from him on the other side, Daniel Hunter's a, a hell of a player, very fast, uh, versatile. So I mean, when you have two guys like that, and just with the pressure that they get, uh, and then obviously the third down package is giving you different looks and, and getting in and out of that. Just, just causes headaches for the offensive line and just the whole offense if you're not on the same page and they find one-on-ones and they make the most of them. You know, it come game day, it's really about what we do. It's not really about what they do. Um, that's the way I try to approach things as the week goes on. Um, but uh, I, I think it's a good challenge. You know, I think they have a real good offense. Um, there's different things we can do to kind of um, – you know, make the game go in our favor. Uh, that's what we'll do. So, and now we're joined by Isaiah Stanback, who has his own personal telestrator out, take an up close look at how about that running back for the Vikings, Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Dalvin Cook is an absolute dog. He's one of the most dominant, effective runners in the league. But not only does he have great capabilities, but his offensive line is doing a great job blocking in their zone running scheme, as well as these dominant receivers in Jefferson and Thielen getting in there to be a little physical as well. What you guys are going to see right here is this offensive line does a great job of kicking out the end man on the line of scrimmage. We're getting a reach block by their guard. Tackles working up to the second level, sealing that in the seven-man box. You're going to see Thielen come in and seal this, this, uh, this free safety right here, leaving the least capable man on the field in their cornerback to, to go ahead and make a tackle on their most dominant player. Show you guys how this plays out not to the favor of the Carolina Panthers. As you guys see right there, perfect. All right, look at this hole right here that's created. Doing a great job of creating this nice little ravine right here. You got him coming in on this block. And as we mentioned before, you're leaving this cornerback to try to stop number 33, Dalvin Cook. Not going to happen. He wants no part of that. He runs through these tackles, gets a nice little touchdown. We'll show you guys from a different angle exactly how this looks. Again, we're going to play it out real quick. Boom, perfect, right there. All right, well, you guys see the seal block right here. Kicks him, yeah, kicks him out. We got maybe a little bit of holding, but it's not going to get called. We got this guy working up to the next level. And keep your eye right here on this man. Who comes into the picture? Adam Thielen, their number one receiver, coming in with a nice little block to ensure that their running back has the best opportunity to take off. There he is, running through arm tackles. When you come up to tackle this man, you better bring your big boy pants because he's a problem. And you can really see his running ability on that particular play. Isaiah, we appreciate it. And up next year on the Mike McCarthy Show, the coach rejoins us. And we take an up-close look at Kirk Cousins and the Vikings' pass offense. 
Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Rejoining me now here in the Globe Live studio is the head coach, Mike McCarthy himself. Talking about these Minnesota Vikings, you know, it's interesting. They're coming off a of bye week just like you. And in their last game, just like the Cowboys, they won in overtime on the road. Uh, a touchdown pass of Kirk Cousins to K.J. Osborne. How does, uh, you know, Cousins is a guy you faced before. He's a guy that likes to throw the ball down the field. How's he looking this year? He's not turning the ball over. He's only got two picks. Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I think this is about as good as I've, I've seen him play. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's played it high level throughout his career, you know, in spurts, but uh, he, I think he's, uh, he looks very consistent, you know, the ball's coming out on time, uh, I mean, they do a really good job, you know, mixing up their run game, you know, it obviously starts with the wide outside zone, but uh, I, I think Kurt's having a heck of a year so far. Talk wide outside zone, Clint Kubiak is their uh, offensive coordinator, of course, the son of Gary Kubiak. Klein Kubiak, uh, Klein's yeah, brother, we're, we're, is a scout for the Cowboys. Locking down the phone lines this week, that's for sure. <laughs> does, the, does the apple fall far from the tree as far as Clint Kubiak and his dad? I, I tell you what, no. I mean, I, I, Gary, had, had, you know, he's done it, he did it for such a long time at such a high level, and, and you knew exactly what you were getting with when you played your Gary Kubiak team, just the way they ran the football and everything to come off of the run. and. You know, and then the ability to change the personnel, you know, the first 15 plays of the game. And, you know, then also you'll see some of that in the second half. So uh, very well coached all the way through. And uh, so, yeah, but definitely you can see a lot of similarities. Well, and he's got weapons to throw to. And yeah. and you got a couple of running backs, not just Dalvin Cook, but yeah. also uh, Alexander Madison in the backfield. But the two wideouts, uh, Thielen as well as Justin Jefferson, are pretty hard to handle. Huh? This is a, this this is a perimeter group that's going to be a big challenge for us. I mean, they, they can, um, they, they you know, the big play production. You know, I think they do a really good job of you know creating matchups. Uh, you know, you'll you'll see all the different formations. But you know, like I said, I think Kurt's playing at a very high level and. You know, all these guys are, you know, it's 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 matchup football at its best. One guy I want to ask you about uh, on your defense is J. Ron Curse, who, of course, started his career with the Minnesota Vikings, was primarily a special teams yeah. player there. Now here he is at age 27, and after a year where he started seven games in Detroit, you're getting an, getting him in his prime. He's playing very well for you. Oh, no it? doubt. He's playing great for us and just, you know, having the chance to compete against him when he was a special teams player in Minnesota. I mean, he was always such a handful, but – you know, now he's he's doing it, you know, particularly through all the different defensive personnel groups. You know, great matchup, you know, figure for us. Um, very intelligent, great communicator. So uh, definitely it's uh, it's it's been really cool to watch his his path from Minnesota to Detroit to here. And uh, can't say enough, enough great things about him. All right. We wrap up the Mike McCarthy show in just a moment. That Monday meeting is awesome. Um, we did that last year and it was pretty helpful um, just to kind of see how the defensive guys see things, um, you know, how certain splits affect how they match certain route concepts or different ways and, um, you know, how teams play certain coverages and how that changes. Um, super valuable for sure, um, especially having George on a week like this. Final couple of minutes here of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. And a lot of times we talk unsung stars in this uh, segment. I've got an unsung star on your coaching staff with definite Minnesota Viking ties. That would be one George Edwards, who is for six years the defensive coordinator for Mike Zimmer there in Minnesota. Of course, was a Cowboys assistant coach going back some 20 years ago. How much has he meant to your staff here the last couple of years? Oh, no, George is a, is a great piece for, of our staff you know he's a great addition and you know it, it was fun I was talking to Dalton Schultz we had to cross the hall segment on Monday and George coached the tight ends in the cross the hall segment and and I said well hey how did it go he goes to get George Edwards the week of the Minnesota game two years in a row can't go any better so I think that says it all I mean George is a outstanding football coach has done it for a long time obviously has a lot of history with Mike and, you know, it definitely, I mean, going back to last year and, you know, gives you good insight of, you know, just more about how they put their plan together and what, what to expect and just make sure we're dotting all our I's and crossing all our T's. Sunday night at U.S. Bank Stadium, you talked about the environment there, but can you imagine, this is Halloween night at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Well, I'm, I'm hoping for a lot of Halloween Cowboy fans <laughs> there you Sunday go. night because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very loud environment. It's a great home environment for them, but uh, it's clearly one of the, one of the loudest stadiums that we'll compete in. So in Halloween night, Sunday night football. So 
Really looking forward to it. All right. Uh, good luck in Minnesota on Sunday night. We appreciate all of you for joining us here on the Mike McCarthy Show, and we will see you again next week. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford, built for Texas, built for you. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.